All right, everybody. Part two of the shift cable install. Um, so last we saw, we had just installed the nut on the back of the shift cable. So uh, very important that you get that nice and secure, nice and snug here, because as you can see, when you grab this uh, brass part right here, notice there's no wiggling in there. Um, you will see some travel on this. Um, but that's that's completely normal. So once you got the the nut tightened on this side and everything's fastened well, um, let's start reassembling everything. So this is your shift guide. Um, your shift guide, in reality, can go one of two ways. So install it like I have here. All right. Let's go ahead and slide it all the way back, just like that. All right. So the next piece that you're going to need. Is referred to as the um, the retainer. All right, so put it on either way, but just go ahead and start by uh, threading it on right here, and just go ahead and turn it clockwise so you get it on. Now the big question is, you know, you see a bunch of threads, right? How how far do we we turn it? And that is a good question. You want to keep turning this thing just about halfway. It doesn't have to go on that far, and I'll show you why. So that's about halfway. You can see what, what it ends up looking like is something like that. Um, what you're going to do next is grab your 5 16 uh, nut and go ahead and start threading that on. Big question is do I use Loctite on there? Use your own discretion. You can use blue. Definitely don't use red on this. Um, I put this thing on and off, I don't know, probably 10 times. And it's never came off before, and I, I haven't used any kind of Loctite or anything, so it does end up uh, backing up against this uh, retainer. So, in my opinion, you don't really need to use it, but uh, feel free if, if you're one of the people who like to use Loctite, go ahead. Okay. The big question is, you know, how how far do you you turn this before you call it good? And um, I turn it right before it starts protruding out the. Uh, the back there just like you see and then what I'll do is I'll back this uh, retainer off just a little bit so it has something to back up to all right about like that all right so let's do the next part here all right so one of the things to notice if you got a lot of uh, I guess you call it corrosion in there it's more like uh, like a buildup like you would see uh, with a lot of uh, excess calcium. Um, you have a seal around, like the surface around here, and there's actually a seal that kind of blocks off the um, exhaust uh, water. So in theory, you shouldn't have any water in here, and you have the seal for your shift cable back there. So in theory, this should be um, water tight in here. If it's not, uh, chances are this seal around what they call the this little guy it's called a bell crank this seal is probably no good and uh, you probably just need to get a, a new seal but yeah keep that in mind if you if you got a lot of build up here that's what that is uh, bell crank seal just need to get that replaced um, as you can imagine on this one I'm gonna go ahead and replace that uh, before installing it so that's uh, that's what your next step is um, inst install a new bell crank seal if you got it um, I highly recommend it and then we're gonna go ahead and work on installing it. Okay, so as you're installing the bell crank, you can't just install it obviously by itself. You definitely wanna use some uh, gasket sealer. Um, any, anytime you have any kind of sealing surface on a marine application, you, you have to use it. You can't just use the uh, O-ring by itself. Um, the other thing you wanna do here is you need the lever, the shift lever to go inside this piece here as well at the same time. So uh, coordinate that, right? So you want to pull this out and slide it. You'll see that little detent right there. Make sure you line that detent up with the screw as it goes in, right? Makes sense. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and slide this in at the same time. And then I'll just hand tighten this. One thing to mention here just a little tip. As you're moving the bell crank into the shifting lever, um, technically you could 
crank this 7 sixteenths nut down just about at any position. Um, the problem with that is if you don't get it at the right position, you're wrong. Because this thing, this bell crank needs to be at a certain position when you install the alignment tool. So take a look right there. You'll see how I left a little bit of the bell crank exposed. It's kind of like the detent area where this screw uh, or the bolt kind of threads down into it. It's important to kind of line that up as you're sliding it in place. You should have a pretty good clear picture there. Um, now watch, I'm going to go ahead and slide it the rest of the way in there. Make sure that's nice and loose. And then you may need a, a screwdriver on this side to kind of back up against that bell crank so it can kind of slide all the way in. Alright, just like that. And then go ahead and just hand tighten this a little bit. Alright, now, like I said before, you want to make sure you're inside of that detent because you can potentially put this on at the wrong angle and, and you don't want to do that. So um, you want to double check and make sure you're in the right position. I'm going to go ahead and put just a little, I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit with this um, the 716, not too much, but uh, just a little bit here. Okay, in order to get to that, you'll notice it's, it's not really at a good angle and this will also kind of tell you, I've already kind of tightened it by the way, um, this will tell you if you're in the, the right position anyways. Just go ahead and take your bell crank and slide it back and then you should be able to take your uh, 7 16 at this point alright and tighten it up alright now you can see we have just a little gap right there and you know this isn't a contest to see how tight you can make that you definitely don't want to over tighten that so we're going to call that good you'll still see the uh, the gasket compound in there so and then just do a quick little function check because once you you tighten this uh, bolt up here you won't be able to, to do this and this way you can make sure everything is is good here so we've got a good sealed surface we've got this little bolt tightened uh, our 5 16th down here is good all right so that leaves us with the 3 8 that goes in here. So, we'll go ahead and start threading that in. Okay, so the big question is with your 3 8 up here, and you're backed up with your, your crescent wrench like that, you saw earlier in the video. You know, how, um, how tight do I make this? Uh, use your discretion. Um, it's not a contest to see how tight it can be. Just uh, make sure it's good and snug. Same thing with this 5 16ths down here. Uh, after everything's said and done, you'll notice the cable's a little loose here. Completely normal. Um, the roller right up here does all the, the work in terms of getting it all shifted. So um, once you've completed that, uh, we've got our new, uh, well, we got our bell crank with our new seal in there. We got our 7 16ths, our 3 8 and 5 16 all tightened up. You know, just do a double check make sure everything is good um, at this point you should be able to kind of test it back and forth as long as you don't have the cable hooked up on the engine compartment um, so you know what's what's next uh, what you're gonna need let's, let's go down here got my little tool here OMC uh, has a alignment tool for your shifter cables. This is kind of what it looks like. They, There's a, a ton of different brands out there. All right, so this is kind of what it looks like. This is for the shifter cable on the inside. And this is the other one. So the big question is, do you need any special tools uh, to do a shifter alignment? The answer to that is yes. Um, and these are it very cheap you can pick these up less than 40 bucks in most cases uh, save it just in case you never know 
but what happens here is you got these two bolts all right and it just slides right on top of the bell crank now if you notice your bell crank isn't lined up properly just go in and tilt that down a little bit all right so Here's the main point here, right? So you want to make sure this is flush back there. Same thing on this surface. And make sure the bell crank is lined up inside of this piece here. Once you've done that, you know, as I said earlier, double check your 5 16 3 8 7 16 Make sure your bell crank is good. Um, yeah, once you've done that, at this point, we've done everything we need to do on the outside, uh, meaning the stern drive. And now we're going to go ahead and move into the engine area and we'll adjust the rest of the cable that way. Okay, everybody. So we're in the uh, engine cab at this point. So this part, I'm going to show you how to get this piece and these pieces all in alignment. Um, in terms of how they're supposed to be from a baseline. Now, when you get in and actually when you're doing your final adjustments on your um, engine bracket, and I'll zoom out here in just a second and show you what I'm talking about when I refer to the uh, engine engine bracket, this, this specifically is gonna be really the end of the video in terms of getting the cable aligned and, and this these two specific pieces aligned properly. If you need help, with this, the uh, engine bracket, this is a whole nother video. Let me know in the comments field that this is something you're interested in and in trying to figure out because uh, when you bring in your the actual um, bunny ears, as someone calls it, uh, or the, the shifter itself, how it um, correlates with the shifter cable itself, it's a whole nother beast getting this um, adjusted. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, put some comments in, in the um, below let me know if that's something you like but uh, let's jump back to the uh, the cable here and that tool that we were talking about earlier let's go ahead and install it on this okay so the obvious first part here is you want to take that side and thread it through that hole that's going to be the first step and then once you've got that completed We'll go ahead and jump down to this side here. Now, the um, the part that we're going to focus on next, once you have it in the bracket, is this little guy. You'll see here. I got that in, and then this is kind of the important part right here. I'm gonna slide the camera in. Notice how this guy is not in the center of that pyramid. You're going to have to take it out of the bracket, rotate this backwards so it's dead center. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and then show you. All right, take a look. So now we're in the center. If you notice that nut in the back, that's actually what you're using to back up uh, against that guy right here. And that just keeps it from, from moving around. So do you need to... Um, to tighten that backup nut right now? No, not necessarily, and I'll show you why. Let's go ahead, now that you've got it pretty close, let's go ahead and take it out of the alignment tool, and let's install it in the engine bracket itself. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the cable forward, and you'll notice this guy, and don't lose your position, goes right in there, just like that. Okay. So, this will slide on like that. Now, another thing, too, if you're having trouble keeping the position properly, try backing this nut back up a little bit there, because then that'll keep, keep everything free. And then we can tighten that all, um, all up later. Next thing you want to do... Just go ahead and take your washer, stainless steel, slide that on first, 
along with your 7 16 bolt right here. All right. And there is a pin that goes in there as well. Go ahead and slide that into place. And I'll open that up here in just a second with a pair of pliers. And then up here, there's actually another pin as well. And we'll go ahead and slide that in. Okay. And just finish snugging up your 7 16 back there. And don't forget our little nut right here. Now's your chance to snug that up as well. Okay. All right. So we got our 7 16 nuts tightened up. We got our cotter pins installed and separated. And that's going to be it, everybody. So that is your shifter cable, part one and part two, completely installed. I hope it wasn't that hard for everybody. Now, what gets a little tricky, which, like I said earlier, we can make into another video if there is demand for it, is getting this engine bracket tuned so you're in neutral in the right position, you're in forward in the right position, you're in reverse in the right position. But that is a completely different video altogether easily another 20 minutes so let me know subscribe hope you like the videos have a good one